Right, so it's that time of year again and Jeremy and I are about to take you on a walk through the fascinating inventions from Test Lab, an experimental curated space together with Telefonica at Two Day Summit Wired 2016. So Jeremy, you're the curator, tell us more. Well, Shivi, I'm particularly excited about Test Lab uh, this year because we've spent the better part of 12 months hunting down these phenomenal creations. Uh, these are the futuristic, forward-looking gadgets, services, apps and products that we want folks to discover. Discover they will. So enough talk. Let's dive into our first demo. Well, one of the exhibits we have here at Wired and Telefonica's Test Lab is Voice Mod. Now, Voice Mod is like a pimped version of Snapchat. And what it does is you record yourself through camera and it overlays a voice module on top of what you're saying so you sound like something else. The best way to do this is to actually show you so you can see what it's like. And so, well, let's give it a go. So, what you do, uh, very similar to Snapchat, you choose what we want here. I'm going to go for a robot because that's very wired with some particularly funky music. And you have to look at the camera up here and then record your voice using the mic. Now I'm going to tap to record. Hello and welcome, welcome to, to Wired and Telefonica's Test Lab. I hope you have a very nice time. Over here, a button lights up and you press it to see what you did. Welcome to Wired and Telefonica's Test Lab. I hope you have a very nice time. So anyone who knows me is fully aware that I'm not usually a fan of a selfie. You'll rarely find one of me out there on social media or on my camera roll. However, I feel like I now might be converted because Andre here has created this phenomenal service that allows you to pay for something, yeah, using a selfie. Brilliant. So tell us more about how it works. Yeah, Safe is a face recognition mobile payment app that enables people to pay without any belongings. So once you are registered, you can just go to a store and pay with your face. So you don't need your phone, you can leave it at home, you can leave your cards at home, and you can go to a store and pay with your face. Now presumably, this could be really good for security as well, because frankly, it's only your face that is working as a level of authentication. Hence, no one else can really get away with using your cards to make payments. Yeah, exactly. We, we bring benefits for the merchants, and one of the benefits is security. So we are trying to push that with card schemes like Visa, one of our partners, to bring a new concept of cardholder present. So we can prove that you are there. So it's actually the same as you using your card in a, in a payment store, yes. in an electronic payment store. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty secure. This is probably going to be really popular with Gen X and Gen Y, the selfie generation. <laughs> but I would bet you that you're going to see some older folks who normally wouldn't be that keen to do a selfie really starting to use this. So well done. I'm very, very impressed. Impressed. Thanks a lot. So Jeremy, when I first saw this car, I thought it's perfect size for someone as petite as myself. But it's more than just a car. Tell me about it. Well, this is the uh, DevBot from RoboRace. Now, what it is, it's essentially a, uh, a prototype robot racing car. It is completely autonomous. It drives itself. Even though it has a cabin here for a human passenger, that will eventually be taken away. And you can see the uh, drawings, how it will eventually look like on the screen up there. Presumably, to develop it further and customize your own car to make it as efficient and powerful as possible, you have to be quite technically minded because you're effectively algorithm tweaking, aren't you? So right now, now, someone can drive in the car, but this can already drive itself around a racing track at race speeds. Well, you might see Jeremy and I sparring off on one of these. I think your bets should be on me. Ooh, right, okay. That was incredibly restful, which is really, really unusual for me. I take a lot of time to fall asleep. Now, I've just tried for Ziz, which is a revolutionary app that helps us not only stay asleep, but fall asleep in the first place, which I have a lot of trouble with, they've teamed up with Metronaps who design these clever pods, incredibly comfortable and lush, that then essentially combine this phenomenal sleeping experience. Jeremy? Jeremy? Hello? Hello, sorry. I'm away with the <laughs> fairies. This, right, uh, so talk us through this. Well, this quite neat little system here is actually, um, despite the pods, it's actually an app. And what it does, it works on an algorithm that uh, plays you a certain set of music, of uh, speech and of background noise to relax your mind and, to, and stop you thinking. So the theory is that you drift off to sleep much quicker than you normally would. 
And because it's an algorithm, it learns as you go and you rate each sleep. And the more you uh, rate it and say that one actually really worked, the better it gets. Exactly. So I spoke to the founder Rockwell to understand more where this idea came from and where he wants it to go. So Rockwell, this is fascinating. Tell me how this even came about. What sparked the idea? So for us, it was the realization that the vast majority of cases of insomnia are just caused by the same simple disease. It's just, it's literally just too much thinking. People lie awake at night, unable to shut off their brains. So the key is if you can quiet someone's mind, you can get them to fall asleep. And that's what Paziz does. Brilliant, where do you want to take this next? Uh, for Paziz, we want to scale. You know, for us, our vision is to, to help as many people in the world as possible with their insomnia. And there are literally 2 billion people globally. It's about 60 million people in the US, 31% of Europe, 2 billion people globally. And there's so much you can do there in the sleep space to help those people. Yeah. So no matter what's keeping you up at night, or if you're a sleep-deprived parent, or just a perpetual insomniac, this could be what you need to try. Ask Pre-Series, what is the highest scoring startup in India? The highest scoring startup in India out of 13,137 competitors is Luminous, founded in 2012, based in Haryana, with a score of 99. Now that is an intelligent system. Right, let's meet the creator. Paul, tell us more about Pre-Series. Right, so the, the quickest explanation that I can give about Pre-Series is that it's bringing artificial intelligence to the world of early stage investing. Right, so it's sort of ironic, even with the amount of VC funding that's going into startups and artificial intelligence in general, that they're not using artificial intelligence to choose those companies themselves. And so Pre-Series is aiming to change that by making it possible to analyze data of past successes to make intelligent decisions about what companies will succeed. You as the investor can make informed, intelligent decisions. Interesting. So Paul, taking this forward, what is sort of the one singular largest challenge your team and you will face in refining this? All right, that's a great question. The biggest challenge in getting to where we are now was in getting the data put together. Was, we're building over 570 features for all these companies. Uh, we've trained it on 350,000 companies and we're adding more all the time. So that's been the biggest challenge up to date. The biggest challenge in the future is going to be bringing that data and all these machine learning metrics together into deeper insights about the companies. So pre-series could just be your most intuitive, predictive, user-friendly tool to help you suss out if your startup, and certainly the field you're trying to crack, has investment potential. So I'm here with Christian, who's created 52 Masterworks. Tell us more. Yeah, 52 Masterworks is the, one of the first crowdfunding platforms for art. So instead of buying one art piece on your own, you buy it with some other people, with some other investors. So the, the crowd is buying a piece of art instead of a single person. So it's certainly making it more accessible and affordable That's for those right. who normally couldn't afford to spend yes. a massive amount of money on a beautiful That's piece right. of art. Where do you want to take this in the future? Um, yeah, no, uh, what we want to create is one of the biggest art collections for contemporary art. So founded by the crowd. So one day we want to have our 52 Masterworks Museum one day, I don't know, so that's very high aims, but this is where we're going to. Some might say ambitious, I think that's fantastic. I think that's what you should keep your eyes on. So for both artists and art lovers, you must check out 52 Masterworks. Um, Pepper is SoftBank uh, robotic social robot that's designed to work in a variety of environments, but it's keyed to interacting with people. So it's being used in hospitals where it can act as a patient assistant, in shops where it can give product advice and sell products, right the way through to um, over in Asia, it's being used in fast food restaurants where it can take orders and payments within the store. But it is all keyed around interacting with people. So this is Polaroid Swing, and Polaroid Swing is a fully interactable photo. So it's not like a normal photo where it's just stay still. You kind of take it like any other photo, but when you hold it and move, it moves with you. So it's kind of more of a tangible thing to hold. Our technology lets you feel things in the air without touching anything. So using no gloves or attachments, we use ultrasound to project sensations through the air, enabling us to vibrate the surface of your skin on your hand. 
and we can make you feel controls, so buttons, dials, switches, so that you can operate devices without touching them, and also uh, create things that don't even really exist, 3D shapes, objects, textures. So we use the controls in areas like automotive, so you can hold your hand out over the dashboard and have the controls to your music player, say, projected onto your hand, operate them, feel them, know that it's listening and responding to what you're doing, all without taking your eyes off the road. And the, the sort of magical things in aspects like gaming, virtual reality, augmented reality, being able to see this digital content, reach out, touch it, interact with it and feel it.